We're at the National Speakers Association Conference in Orlando, Florida, and I'm here with Clint Greenleaf, the CEO of Greenleaf Book Group. Hi, Clint. Hey, Brett, how are you? Good to see you. Great to see you. Hey, so I wrote this article a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you had a chance to see it about the book publishing industry is dead. Long live book publishers. Yes. So I wanted to get your comments on this, your views as a book publisher. I think you mostly are doing printed books today. I know you're moving a little bit uh, into e-books or maybe a lot, but I'd like to hear what your views are on that. Sure. I think that it's a matter of content. It's not a matter of actual ink on paper or anything else along those lines. It's a matter of putting the content out there for the consumer. So our job is really to be a pipeline company. We want to take the content from the, the creator's head and then filter it and create it accordingly and then get it to the consumer who's willing to pay for it. And what do you think about the, the hypothesis I put in this article that once ebook volumes and, and revenues overtake printed book volumes, then that basically means that's a milestone that ebooks are now a commodity. Richard Nash at the Book Expo America said that the copyright is dead, long live the copyright. Because he says, look at simple microeconomics. The last year, a million books were published. And there's a finite demand because how many books can you read <laughs> in a given amount of time? So that's going to drive prices to zero. So the idea is that when ebooks come along and you've got those kind of microeconomic factors happening, then is it the case that black text on white paper, even if it's electronic, in other words, when you just said it's all about the content, does the content, no matter what it is, become a price point of zero given those microeconomics? I don't think it does. I think some will be zero. But the really good stuff that people want, people will always pay for good content. Look at the Wall Street Journal, a great example. All newspapers are free except for the journal. The journal is the only one who's still making money. Right. They're charging for it because people want that content. So I think there will be a lot of free content. The majority of content will be free. I mean, 2,000 books a day, I'm going to guess 1,900 of those will be available free. But the ones that are really, really good are, going to be for, are still going to be charged for, and that's what people look for. Okay, great. Now, uh, did you hear the news today that Amazon announced yesterday that the, for the first time in their history, their ebook uh, volumes exceeded their print book volumes by some huge amount, almost 2x? What are your thoughts on that? I think we're going to see more of that. People will probably want to continue to read ebooks as they get more and more devices, more and more readers. What you're going to have, though, is there's still going to be a need for the printed book. The same way that people still listen to LPs, the same way people still listen to CDs. But there will be a demand increase, obviously, for ebooks as we go along. And then what do you think about the idea that printed books may, the bar may become actually even higher, that they become more sort of a novelty item where, you know, if I wanted just the black and white text, I would just have it in my e-reader, but I have this printed book because it offers something more. It's like a collector's edition or it's in full color or things like that. An emotional attachment to it. So the book will actually mean more. It's going to be more of a keepsake. So I think you're going to see more attractive books, beautiful books. The kind of books that we like to create are going to mean a lot more. And the kind of just raw content, white paper type stuff will almost never be in print anymore. Right, exactly. And let's electronic print. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Now, uh, one of the other ideas that I had talked about in this article was that, you know, it used to be in the old days you had LPs, of course, and CDs, and you paid like fourteen ninety five or nineteen ninety five, and what you really wanted was just the hit single track off the front, and of course, iTunes came along and changed that, and you get that for ninety nine cents electronically, and that's the case with the, I find with a lot of books, right? People just say, just give me the key messages, give me the right. Cliff's Notes version of it. So what do you think about the idea of now with electronic books and these price points coming down, that people, these 99 cent sort of hit title, the, the condensed version of these books come out and in very, very high volumes. What do, you, what do you think about that? I think if the author's involved on the actual consolidation, that might be the case. But the hard part is to know what is really the core part of a book. A novel, for example. I mean, can you take Atlas Shrugged to make it a 20-minute story? Right, 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 right. Not really. So it may apply more to nonfiction than fiction. Absolutely. Okay, cool. And actually, I heard through the grapevine that LinkedIn is doing a big launch in a couple of months of these, uh, they call them shorts. And so they're going to be producing these books uh, on LinkedIn of these very short versions, and they'll be like 99 cents. In right. Have you heard that? I have. And actually, the neat part about that, I would think I would pay more if it was a short book, because I don't really want to read a 300-page business book if I can avoid it. If I can read the 20-page version, I know it's authorized by the author to have the real core content, we're way better off than that. <laughs> you just added value while taking out the fluff. Absolutely. Don't Absolutely. make me sort through it. Do it for me. That's right. <laughs> well, great talking to you, Clint. Uh, it's so uh, been great. Thank you. Thanks a lot.